and said, listen, I want to welcome everybody here in this room to Victory Lane in a month. And I'm looking at him thinking, you did that? <laughs> he gets off, he gets off the, he gets off the stand, come back, grab my son, Dad, you keep huh? <laughs> What do you mean? I said, you keep what, 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 what are you doing? You can't do that. You said, you're going to win. You know, I just, you know, so... As it turned out, as it turned out, we did. Thanks for tuning in today for another new and exciting episode from Stock Car Facts, which we try to post every Tuesday at about noon. Or you can watch some of our previous episodes. Here at Stock Car Facts, we would really love to recreate the race day sights, smells, and sounds that we first experienced for ourselves in 1974 at Michigan International Speedway. But unfortunately, you know that's not possible here. However, we can do the next best thing in that we can share with you what happened at these events and we can talk to those people who created those memories. Or, well, you know, those facts. So we'd appreciate it if you sit back and relax and enjoy this latest episode today of Stock Car Facts with me, your host, Kevin Schwarzy. Oh, and by the way, later, you'll have a chance to comment on this content. And if you haven't already, please hit the like button as well as the follow bell to be notified of brand new shows right here. And we'd appreciate it if you'd share this on all of your social media platforms. Thank you. Today on Stock Car Facts... So, like I was saying earlier, you know, a lot of people know a lot about, you know, the family lineage, and, and unfortunately, I don't know much about your dad. I mean, please, let me know, what about this guy? Now, Billy's older than you. Billy's one year older okay. than me, yep. And how many how many kids in the family? Uh, there were there were five. Five, okay. Hence the, hence the number five. Okay. And you're, are you the youngest? I'm in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I won't pick on you for being the youngest. I'm the <laughs> oldest. <laughs> Uh, and Billy is is Billy's just one year older, one year so older. he's second in line. Second in line. Yeah. And so it wasn't just your dad though. There was others. I do believe there's a deacon. God, God, gosh, my was... uncle, Uncle uh, Deacon, which is Richard, raced. Um, and actually, every every one of my uncles, I think, at some point had uh, some racing in them. And and of course, they they started. Uh, I think the I think the racing part of it started in the probably in the early 50s, um, which they may have just run their, um, my grandfather, the on the door or something. My, my grandfather had a bakery. And, okay. um, oh, wow. That's a jump bakery to crazy well, cars. Well, <laughs> out, out of the bakery, they ended up hot rodding some of this stuff and, and dragging it back on one of the interstates. So and instead of, course, of running liquor, we're running bakery goods. And, and, and of course, and, and, and a couple of the guys in the in, in their gang ended up um, racing at Silver Springs in cars that uh, at that day were were street cars um, uh, turned into in, into race cars. You know, they would gut them and put cages in them, and and a lot of them were were six cylinders and <clears throat> and uh, and flatheads and and um, I assume GM parts, uh, GM. Yeah, well, they ran. They, they ran Plymouth. <laughs> that my dad ran Fords. My dad ran wow. Chevrolets. Uh, you know, my my dad raced from the uh, the middle fifties up until the late seventies, um, and predominantly he raced a family um, driving a race car. Wow! Uh, at okay. at that time, uh, if I can if I can go back in, in the sixties and. Uh, throughout the whole 60s and the early 70s, if you were a talented race driver like my father, you could do that. Um, you, you could do that, that. And, and the rides that you could get, I can remember on a, on a Wednesday or Thursday, our phone at the house would ring off the hook. <laughs> and my dad had multiple opportunities to go drive for people. In a t and at times, they would race two or three times, maybe in one day, uh, certainly wow. four or five times in a weekend. Yeah, um, yeah, and and Dad was always on the move, and almost every and night. Of the almost week. every night, yeah. different tracks, and close by. Not you and, have to and predominant, predominantly on dirt. Yeah. yeah. Um, however, I want to get to a point about my dad. Um, 
I think I think every February growing up, my dad would go to Daytona as every race driver in the country probably would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, he'd always take his driver's bag along. And um, I, I think it was, I think it was something missing, although my dad had a very, very good career. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of races he won, track championships. He was a very, very, very talented guy in his era mm -hmm. and uh, was well-respected, um, had a <clears throat> tremendous fan base. I mean, there were, uh, growing up, I can remember there were, there were hundreds of people that would follow my dad nightly from racetrack to racetrack to racetrack. And, and uh, you know, however, at that time, people weren't torn for their, you know, for their time like they are today. Mm -hmm. And and, <laughs> and short track racing was was a lot, well, actually a lot bigger than it is today. As big as it is, it was much bigger then. I can remember running fairgrounds having crowds of eleven to 15,000 people opening day and special nights and... Um, the point I was trying to get to is, is when I started doing the stock car thing and, and um, ended up going to Daytona, I, I could just, although my dad never said it, I could just feel that, that he was ex really excited about it. However, I, I think in the back of his mind, it was something he missed. So I want to share a little story with you. Um, in, in the early 90s, I can't remember if it was 91 or 92, I was going to make an attempt uh, for the Daytona 500 and went to, um, went to a GM test in late December. Uh, so with, serious. With, yeah. our, with, our, Testing, with yeah. our Monte Carlo. Yeah. And um, the test it was a three-day test. First day, it, was, it, it had rained early in the morning. And, and, um, and first of all, get back to the beginning, my, my, my dad came. Uh, he wanted to get just wanted to get away for uh, for uh, for a weekend Especially in February for a weekend in Florida. Yeah. This was this was this was maybe uh, this was a, a a December weekend, oh, so right. late December weekend. So naturally, it's beautiful in Florida at that time. And uh, but anyway, um, before before I left, I called my mom and I said, "Listen, I I I won't take Dad's helmet along. Why would you do that?" I said, well, "I don't know." I'm going to make a swing here. <laughs> so <laughs> um, the first day of the test, um, there was a little break in the action. It had rained in the morning, and, and uh, I walked into the NASCAR trailer. And I'm not going to say that I was extremely familiar with everybody, but at that time I had been around seven or eight years and, and, and knew some people. And, uh, of course, I, I think – People knew who I was when I walked in the trailer. Mm -hmm. So I go to, the, go to the front of the trailer, and I knocked on the door. And, Come on in. Opened up the door, and there's Bill France, Jr., Les Richter, Dick Beatty, and Harold Kinder are having a – I mean, Bill France, Jr. says, uh, what can we do for you, Bob? I said, well, I have a very strange request. And what would that be? I said uh, – I hope you know that, that my dad, Bill France, went, yep, we know all about your dad. That's all he said. And I said, listen, I'll get to the point. I said, I'm here, and I, I, I really believe if I can look into a crystal ball, I'm going to be here for a while, which I was correct. Um, because of my dad's annual trip to Daytona in February. And I said, I think it was one thing missing in his career is he never got a chance to get on the speedway. And I'd like to give him that. And there was just a big pause in the room. And it, and it felt like forever, I'm sure. It, and it felt, <laughs> it, it, ten, 10 seconds felt like five minutes, okay? And I just, nobody said a word. No, I'm not kidding, nobody said a word. Turned around, walked out, and I thought, but that was stupid. And that was really stupid, okay? Never really got a reaction. Uh, so we went through the weekend. Of course, every morning uh, at that time, they had a driver's meeting. Every driver in the room has to be there, and they go through the day and new safety stuff that's coming and new rule changes that are coming and what's going to happen at Daytona, blah, blah, blah. And on Sunday morning, uh, the room was filled. 
Uh, they go through the agenda for the day, and Dick Beatty says, oh, by the way, Chuck's going to close a half hour early today. I'm sitting all the way in the back. Chuck's going to close a lot early today, and we're going to give last half hour to Bobby's dad, Bobby Gerhardt Sr. Wow. And the room turned like that <laughs> and looked, and every driver in there, I'm thinking, shit. <laughs> it's gonna happen, right? Wow. It's gonna happen. They're gonna give him his own. And I thought, wow. you're kidding, right? So that's huge. You gotta keep in mind, I never shared that with my dad. I never, I never said I was gonna try that. I didn't want to disappoint right, him. This one, exactly. You know, and and also didn't want to give him a chance to prepare for it. Okay, <laughs> it, it, just double-edged sword here. So. <laughs> If you knew anything about my dad, my dad would like to maybe have a cocktail or two and <laughs> probably didn't expect him until about noon, which he, he hit it right on the money. And <laughs> so when he get there, I pulled him aside and I said, listen, dad, you, I got to tell you something. What's that? I said, uh, I, I made a request and they granted it. You're going to get a shot on the racetrack today. Dad, <laughs> yeah, right. He said, really, really. What's the joke? What, really? <laughs> and about that time, and about that time, DW comes up, puts his arm around my dad, and says, "Well, you ready?" <laughs> the look on my dad's face was priceless. It was un <laughs> unbelievable. So we uh, <laughs> we got him in the car and got him got him comfortable. And and look, it went great. Did a great job. Uh, he, he, How fast he run? That's what everybody asks. He you, ran. Right? <laughs> uh, he ran in the in the. It took him a little while naturally. Sure, I mean, you're sure. just gonna walk up to that, but right. his confidence level put him in the in the hundred and eighties, wow. and and uh, we were in that range when with me in the car. It just took him a little bit to to feel comfortable and have the uh, wow. confidence that sure that you know. It, you would do this, you know, right. but... Uh, you want to bring it back in a basket, right? Yeah. You didn't want to make a whole lot of stuff either. Right? But you, and you Makes know what? Sense. Listen, and it, and through the years, through the years, NASCAR has taken a lot of shots yeah. from, a, from a lot of, a lot of different people, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different critical things. They, they also had a very personal side to them. Sure. You know, sure. and they were people. And, yeah. and uh, you know, to do something like that, to be honest with you, I don't know that you could do that today. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't know if that could get. I don't know if that could get done. But uh, uh, they're just back at that time. Um, boy, it's just um, you could write a book about what was going on. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah, you hear stories like that. You know, the, the human side of NASCAR. Yes, and and and. and and I understand it's a it's a multi billion dollar company now. Correct. Right? Yes. They don't share everything, of course. Correct. And but uh, to do that for your dad, I think was neat. And a lot of people say, you know, racing has changed, and you know, a lot a lot of those people are gone now. You know, yes. Beanie was one of the important ones in my career. Uh, uh, you know, working for Scene, and uh, you know, Harold Kinder, great guy. Oh yeah, great guy. Never yeah. got to. I think I spoke to Bill France once. You know, Junior once. Never spoke to senior. Never, I don't think I ever spoke to Les Richter. But you know, you you said those four names. I thought, wow, you hit the powerhouse here. <laughs> well, they just they just happened. The they just team. happened to be there. I walked in at the right time, and when I opened the door, I went, oh shit, <laughs> this could this could be big here. But but yeah, you're it, going like yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm drinking it, a little they, bit. They they <laughs> did they small. did uh, you know it felt like I'm gonna tell you something when my my dad got out of the car he looked ten years younger. Yeah, oh, instantly sure. it was. Uh, wow, it it was a p cool thing, really. Um, and I don't know if I ever met your dad. I don't. I don't recall. Uh, you know, when I was going through your your photos to give them to you. Yeah. You know, you're 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 looking at the large icon, which is about that big. You know, <laughs> maybe the size yeah. of a you know maybe a, a, a half dollar on your computer screen. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to tell who is who, but. Uh, I, I would assume he came as much as he could. He came the, a lot. They came. Uh, listen, they they came early on. They were a staple every year um, that, through the early nineties. Um, uh, but he wasn't, my, wasn't like dads are today, you know. In, in it, no, and, no, you know, no, no. My my, my mother was diagnosed with with cancer in the in the uh, uh, in the middle nineties, and and that that just changed things. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I remember we, that. I and remember we lost her in the late. We lost her in the late nineties, yeah. and um, and after that, Dad still came to races. He he um, he was inducted into the Eastern Motorsports yeah. 
uh, Press Association Hall of Fame in in uh, in 2002, January 2002. I'll never forget it. And I'm not going to say he was never uh, he never did a lot of public speaking. And I know he got like me, he got very uncomfortable in front of a lot of people. <laughs> and when we went there, I tried to calm him down to when he when he did his speech, and, and he did fantastic. He did absolutely fantastic he got up and went through his whole career and had everybody laughing and had everybody crying within the same speech mm-hmm. do you understand at the end of it he thanked everybody and said listen i want to welcome everybody here in this room to victory lane in a month and i'm looking at him thinking you did what <laughs> he gets off he gets off the he gets off to stand, come back to him. I said, Dad, you can't do that. <laughs> what do you mean? I said, you can't. You, what, you just, what, are you, what are you doing? You can't no, do you that. Just did to me. He said, but you, you're going to win. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. You know, so as it, turned out, you as it turned out, we did. Yeah. And, and Dad, <laughs> Dad was there. Uh, and that, that might that have been one of the that, – that was one of the more special races, uh, given my dad being in the pits and – uh, coming to Victor Lane with us because naturally growing up, listen, um, we were in Victor Lane a lot with my dad. Yeah, Bill yeah. and I were, and uh, you know the whole family was. So you know to be able to share that with him is something I'll never forget for sure. But I'm sure, I'm sure as you raced, uh, you know, you know you start locally and then you you know and you of course winter locally you know, but then you go to the big time and you're not winning. Yeah, and you know and struggled like you said you oh, struggled yeah. big time. Well then. You get to the point of okay, now we get a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little better, and then now we're winning, and so now Dad gets to come share that. Yeah, you get to see us win, and not only win, yeah. but on the biggest stage, the two biggest stages that you can win in, and and stock car racing, Daytona, and then Talladega, and Daytona, Daytona, Daytona. You know, <laughs> yeah. so I'm I'm sure that had to be just extra gratifying, you know, and and I would assume for him too, because most normal thinking parents they want their kids to do better than them. Sure. You know, and I don't know if your dad was like, I don't know if your dad was like Big Bill, like, you know, everything is out in the open and loud. Hey, great job, son. Or if he was just a quiet guy, just a pat on the back and, you know. Uh, he was a pretty outspoken guy. Uh, although, you know, our careers were so different. Um, he raised a family of, of, of five off, you know, of what he made racing. And... <laughs> Not I, I think not he re, I think he retired, <laughs> not because he wanted to. I think he retired because the cost of racing got to a point where this was not a profitable entity anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Seventies. You know, it was really, really. Listen, my dad's issue. last car that that they built, they built on the ground, on a <laughs> car lift. I watched him do it. Uh, that car is in Latimer Valley Museum. He ended up finishing second to that car, the guy who blew at Syracuse. The car oh, ended wow. up having a very, very successful tenure. However, it even at a time in the 70s... I saw it, what Gary Ballou was bringing. It had, <laughs> it had Buick brakes, meaning Buick drum brakes. Um, it, it had leaf spring suspension, um, Springs that they they you know they got out of junkyards. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that's just looks and that's how my dad did did his whole career. Not that the not that the cars were dangerous or they were uh, right, right. But men of that era, that's how they made their cars. And and he lost interest in racing when everything became store bought. Yeah. And and engines you didn't do in your garage. Engines you 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 bought from an engine builder. You know, hey, and, I subscribe to Stock Car Magazine. I can open up and see what those guys are running up in Syracuse. I mean, he's like that. I forget that guy, uh, his name. He had that real weird uh, super mod. Oh, and yeah, it, it just like, that, you know, the, yeah. uh, you know the car I'm talking about, the sure. light blue car. I forget mm-hmm. his name. It just, and I don't think it even ever raced either, did it? <laughs> I don't think that, so. I mean, we're talking no. money. We're, yes. You know, nowadays, like for example, the, C, you know, the CRA series, you know, a couple of years ago, he's been in. But the Laughlins were no offense to the Laughlins, but I mean they were. I heard they were spending, you know, you know, ten grand one shock or whatever. Oh sure, yeah, <laughs> That's absolutely, one shock, you yeah, know? absolutely. And you're going, yeah. wow, how do you compete with that? You know. Well, I mean, it it just, <laughs> I'm, it just brings a new level to what it takes to win. Yeah, yeah. And and um, 
And it changed racing. It really all did. did. And and he he saw what was happening even even here. Mm -hmm. And he saw the level of preparation for us to get ready to go. Um, God, you're testing again. God, you're testing again. Uh, you know, there were there were times we would go to Talladega three or four times in that December, January gap. And you know, you're not even getting paid. <laughs> you're just going to test. You know, the it, it, plus that era he probably grew up in too. You know. Sure, sure, absolutely. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I, I I think that was the best way for us to be confident. Yeah, um, yeah. That that when it came time to go to Daytona, we knew we were putting in the truck. Yeah. And um, but racing and, around here, you know, you're racing one night a week, then you're racing the next night a week. There's no, you don't have time to prepare like that. That's correct. So yeah. you, your guys' mindset changed, and not not to say your dad was old fashioned or anything, but a lot of racers like that, mm -hmm. they were never, they would have never done that, you know. Like, like uh, you know, you raced with Joy Fair, I, I believe, yeah, a couple a times. Yeah, a little bit, yes. And you know, same thing. I, he and I wrote his book 20 years ago, and I'm sorry to bring, I was going to bring copies of books and give you Frank's copy, Bobby's copy, and Joy's copy, but you know, you listen to Joy, and he ran a, you know, ran a shop like yours. But he raced five, six nights a week. But you're not going testing. You're, right. you know, you're hoping you don't wad it up. <laughs> he right. said they'd have the trailer already set up. You just drive it on the trailer, and then you know, you're going to run someplace Sunday morning. You're going to drive down to Ohio Sandusky and run your super mod there Sunday evening. Sunday evening, yes. And, you know, but like you say, now we're going testing, <clears throat> bigger but bigger stage. But you know, I mean, very few people nowadays make a living racing. You know, I always tell people the only people that make money in ARCA is ARCA. <laughs> or, you know, NASCAR. I don't know who's making money doing it now. Actually making a profit. Yeah. Very few people are making a profit. It's very hard to do. Yeah. yeah. So I, I can certainly see where Dad's coming from, and I can certainly see how he, I don't know, would you call it discouraged or just, you know, I just I think I had enough. I've done all I can do. You know, there's nothing more I can do. Well, it just it just got to a point where it, it for him, uh, it, it, it took all the fun out of it. Do you follow me? And, Absolutely. And uh, and seriously, and even for me, it, it becomes a uh, becomes a serious job and a serious commitment when you do this. <laughs> uh, so, um, but I look. I'm glad uh, he he installed in us, uh, and, and when I mean us, my brother Bill and I, the a, a, a really huge competitive drive. Oh, and, um, we did not come. We tried to stay away from you guys. We can see that look in you guys' eyes. <laughs> They're very intense. You know, I got a photo there somewhere. You're sitting in the car. The sunglasses are on, but it's like, I know that look on his face. <laughs> They're here to win, and you are going to stay out of their way because they're they're going to the front, and yeah. you know all their energy is and all their focus is on that. But yes. I didn't realize that you guys, you know, were that involved in the testing programs. And I mean, yeah, yeah. you were running the driver development programs, you know, for Hendrick. Sure. So I'm sure you got to show up for some of that. But um, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, racing is another level, and I don't, we'll never see it like it was. Correct. You know, uh, Things don't go backwards. No, no. And if they do, you're in big trouble. <laughs> Something's wrong. <laughs> you know, but uh, you're right, but it never does. Uh, but, uh, and I'm sure your dad was like just over the moon, you know, uh, you know, with your guy's success. And hey, that's my kid over there, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't like, like you listen to Richard Petty talk about his dad, you know, uh, I think he, I don't know if you ever heard him tell the story, you know, they'd go racing three, three races in one weekend. They'd win two and finish second in the other, and he'd get back Monday morning and lead and say, well, what happened? Well, what do you mean? Well, you finished second in that one. Well, we won the other two. <laughs> I'm sure your dad wasn't like that. I'm sure yeah. he was like, yay, good job, you know. Because, you know, that older generation, it's this is what I'm paying you for. This yes, is what correct. you should do. Yep. So I don't need to pat you on the back. You should do what I'm paying you for. So, you know, buddy. Hey, puppy. I know you're proud of you proud of Bobby too. I, I don't I don't blame you. <laughs> and what's this doggy's name? This guy this guy here is one of my oh this guy here is one of my favorites. We we rescued him. Uh, okay. We rescued him from a uh, from a from a pound right here. Aww. He was dropped off by a trucker uh, at a truck stop. Gets a gets mm. a seizure or two now and then, and uh, mm. I named him Buddy. But you know they they have a. They have a special place when you do that, yeah, you know. Yeah. They really do. They they uh, <laughs> they know when they're taken care of. He's been a great, <laughs> great, great, great dog. Well, buddy, you are the first ever pet 
on my show in four years. Since 2019, I skipped 20, didn't do any there. But since then, you're the first one ever. So you made your debut. So <laughs> congratulations. 